What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with my hands-on and first impressions video of the Motorola Moto G 5G 2023. So without further ado, let's get started. So this is the Motorola Moto G 5G 2023. Now this device was recently launched in May of 2023, and it does feature an MSRP of just 249. Now that is for the factory unlocked model of the phone, and I'm sure as time goes on, this device will be making its way over to the various prepaid carriers, and even postpaid carriers, and typically, if you get a phone through the carriers, you will save even more money. So if you do want to go the carrier route, then definitely take a look and see what different promotions are being offered. Now here's the box the phone does come in, and before we get too far into things here with this device, let's see what we get included. Now the first thing you probably noticed is, this is a very strange looking box for a smartphone. It's a very tall box and also very thin, and there's not much included either. So we get the phone itself, of course, and then we get a quick start guide here and then also some other literature. We also get a SIM card removal tool, and then also included is a USB-C cable for charging and data transfer. But unfortunately, there is no USB wall adapter. Now with this phone, we're getting a 6.5 inch display, so a very large display. It is IPS LCD, and it does feature a 120 hertz refresh rate. So that is a very fast refresh rate, a nice premium feature, and something that you typically wouldn't expect to find with a phone in this segment. I remember it wasn't too long ago that if you wanted to get a phone that ran at 120 hertz, you'd have to spend like $1,000. So the fact that you can now get that feature with a phone at a fraction of that price is really impressive. So that aspect of the display is great, but there is one downside. Unfortunately, this display is 720p. Now I know from previous videos I've made of phones that have a 720p display, people really don't wanna see that anymore. Everybody kind of considers 1080p to be kind of the bare minimum standard and anything less than that is almost unacceptable. Now, for me at least, I don't necessarily agree I feel like we're getting a lot of good stuff here with this phone that kind of justifies that compromise of 720p. But just know that if you're not a big fan of 720p displays, we are getting that here. Now the PPI of this device is 270. We're getting a 20 by nine aspect ratio, so more narrow but taller form factor. And we're getting an 82.9% screen to body ratio. So we do have a hole punch for the front facing camera, which is eight megapixels. And then the phone does have a little bit of a thicker bottom bezel. But overall, for a very affordable smartphone like this one, I feel like this phone does look and feel a lot more expensive than it even is. And then having that 120 hertz refresh rate, at least in my opinion, does make up for this phone being 720p. At 250, you really can't expect to get everything here, and we're certainly not getting everything, but some compromises do have to be made to fit that price point. Now internally with this device, we're getting 128 gigs of storage along with micro SD card expansion. So having that much internal space for a phone that's only 250 is also very impressive. And then if you do find yourself filling up that internal storage, then you can always add in a micro SD card to offload photos and videos, for example. Now, if you're someone who's frustrated by your current phone filling up quite a bit as far as the storage goes, then this phone might be an upgrade for you, at least if your phone doesn't have 128 gigs as its storage amount. So definitely take a look and see how much storage you're currently using with your current device, and then who knows, maybe you're using 50 gigs right now out of a 64 gig phone. Then if you upgrade to this device, you're gonna have plenty of storage. Now there's no wireless charging with the Moto G 5G 2023, but this phone does feature a side-mounted fingerprint sensor. So the fingerprint sensor is located on the power button, so very convenient, and then it is very fast and responsive. So that works really well. I'm certainly a big fan of that. And this phone does feature face unlock, so I do appreciate that we have multiple methods for accessing the device. Now we're not getting a whole lot when it comes to the cameras here in the phone. I already mentioned that the front facing camera is eight megapixels, but on the back of the device, we have a dual camera setup with a 48 megapixel main camera and a two megapixel macro camera for close up images. Now heading over to the camera app, I'll show you some of the more basic features here, but basically we have the standard camera and then we have the macro camera so you can get very close up and have things be in really good detail. We also have portrait mode to get those nice blurred out backgrounds. And then flipping around to the front facing camera, we can also take portrait selfies. So overall for a lower end phone, we are getting a lot of different abilities here, but at the same time, we are lacking some camera features such as an ultra wide angle camera, for example. Now video recording with this device is limited at 1080p for both the front and rear cameras. So keep that in mind as well. Now internally here with this device, we're getting four gigabytes of RAM along with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 480 plus 5G. Now that processor is kind of new to me. I've never used a phone with that processor before and so far so good. 
I feel like this phone runs nice and smoothly. I am a big fan of Snapdragon processors. In fact, Snapdragon just sent me out on a trip to AWE 2023, which was kind of a cool experience, but that's kind of besides the point. Basically what I mean is I'm a big fan of the company and they do make good processors even at the lower end. Now I did run a benchmark test using Geekbench 6, and here are the scores that I got from that test. So I got a single core score of 733 and a multi-core score of 1772. So overall, I find that to be pretty impressive, especially for a phone with just four gigabytes of RAM and being as affordable as this one is. So I do feel like for most people out there, this phone will be plenty fast and even for it being so low end, it can pretty much get the job done in most situations. So whether it's for the more fundamental things such as phone calls or text messages, or for web browsing or going on social media or writing emails or watching video content, this phone will be fast enough for you. It's really just if you're using this phone quite a bit, maybe this is your work phone and you're always on it, where you might notice some frustrations by it not necessarily being as fast as the more premium devices out there. But for a phone that you can buy factory unlocked for just 250, I am actually very impressed with the performance that we're getting. And then the fact that we're getting a smooth 120 hertz refresh rate here with this device, despite it just having four gigabytes of RAM, really is very impressive. Now with this device, we're getting a very large 5,000 milliamp hour internal battery, so definitely expect to get a full day, if not multiple days of usage on a single charge. I'm always a big fan of Motorola giving their phones big batteries, and this phone definitely continues that trend. Now the software that we're getting here is Android 13. Now Motorola has made some changes to Android here in their implementation, but for the most part, they just took the best of stock Android and added in their own bonus features. And from what I've noticed so far, and from my experience with Motorola devices in general, their software is usually pretty much free of bugs. So they do a nice job with their software, kind of giving it a nice refined experience. So overall, I'm very happy about that. And definitely stay tuned for my dedicated tips and tricks video, as I'll be showing you even more features from this device hidden within the software. Now, unfortunately, there is no NFC with the Moto G 5G 2023. NFC is a feature that I personally use quite a bit because that allows you to use your phone for tap and pay to make mobile contactless payments. So it is disappointing that that feature is not here. I feel like NFC is becoming more and more relevant as time goes on, and especially in the last few years, and it really is inconvenient having a phone that doesn't have it. Now, if you've never used NFC, maybe that won't be a big deal to you, but if you are someone that currently uses it quite a bit, then you definitely will miss not having it here. Now, on a more positive note, I do appreciate that with the Moto G 5G 20 23, we are getting stereo speakers. So you're getting audio out of both the main speaker and the bottom of the phone and the earpiece as well. And that's a great premium feature that I really was surprised to see that this phone even had, considering that it's in a very affordable segment within all the various smartphones that are out. But taking a closer look at the hardware of the phone, this phone is made completely of plastic besides the display, which is made of glass. Now that being said though, I am very happy with the materials that we're getting. And also I really like this finish on the back of the phone. I like how it's kind of a frosted finish and doesn't pick up any fingerprints at all. I wish all smartphones had this, but unfortunately many do still have glossy backs and I do prefer not having fingerprints on the back of my phone. I'm sure you can relate. But on the left side of the phone, we just have the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card. On the right side, we have volume up, volume down, and also the power button, which doubles as the fingerprint sensor. Then up top here with the noise canceling microphone. And then on the bottom of the phone, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, microphone, USB-C port for charging and data transfer, and the speaker. And then on the back of the device, we have the dual camera setup, flash, Motorola logo, and that's pretty much it. So, so far, I am very impressed with the Moto G 5G 2023. I feel like this phone has the potential to be one of the best values out there when it comes to affordable 5G Android devices, and I'm really excited to continue to spend more time with it. Of course, there are some downsides with this phone, such as not having an NFC and also having a 720p display, but if you can overlook certain things like that, then you're actually getting a lot here for your money. But most importantly, I'm really curious to know what you think about the Moto G 5G 2023. Do you feel like Motorola did a good job with this device? Or do you think there's things that they should have done in addition to what we're getting here, even at that very affordable 249 price tag? Certainly let me know. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. This is Kevin here, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.